Hey guys, what's up? You know, I thought about doing this and I was just thinking about uh, what Andre of Black Nerd Comedy did. And uh, Andre, if you're watching, I thank you for this uh, inspiration. And I know Zara Nizarak, Sean McLean, you might like this as well because it's similar to what you've done a couple of times. But I thought about what Andre did specifically this morning. And he did basically because, of course, he and Doug Walker are sponsoring the new G.I. Joe War on Cobra um, free game app, which I doubt is totally free, if you catch my drift. Um, and Andre basically reviewed, uh, we watched and reviewed all five episodes, the first five initial episodes from G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, the original 1983 to 1988 uh, series, or actually 1983 to 1990, 1991, because of Dick Entertainment picking it up later on, um, after the movie. So I figured, you know what, why not kind of do a little bit of a an 80, 80s kind of look at, not just G.I. Joe, the G.I. Joe series that I have, but other 80s properties that I have on DVD officially and maybe not so officially. So without further ado guys, let's take a look at some of my 80s uh, complete series sets that I do own as, right, as of right now. Okay guys, so as you can see here I have the movie. And I have, so far, I believe, the complete original Sunbow uh, series when it was released. Yes, the original series. Now, what's funny about this is when I ordered it off Amazon, it came basically like this. It came all taped together. Um, and I think one of the discs may may not work. Or it probably works. You just got to play it a few times. Um... But yeah, I basically have the complete Sunbelt series. I didn't get it in the green case, like you know, some people would think, like the not not the not the uh, collector set which Sean Zaranizorak has. But I ended up getting it, or in the regular sleeve that would come later. But I ended up getting it like this. So, as we can see here, we're going to look at these one on one. So what we have here is basically the first volume and the way they list them I want you to look at this they list them season 1.1 season 1.2 1.3 and in season 2 where I think they just went into the series after that because the way they initial because basically um, if you watch Andre's video he basically talks about the fact that every year they did up until about 1985 when in 85, when they did the five-parter, Rise of Serpentor, or Rise Serpentor or Rise, that's when they just went into a regular series. Uh, which led us, of course, to the movie. But, the, but from 83 and 84, they did just a five-part miniseries. And they did this as sort of the test of waters to see if fans, kids, would be receptive of a G.I. Joe series. And lo and behold, they were. So... Anyway, we have, like I said, 1.1 here, season 1.1. And as we open it, we're going to bring these out carefully. And as you can see, it's kind of empty in the back. It does give you bonus features right there. Kind of get a bit of a dialogue, kind of get a synopsis a little bit right here. But then... We look at these, and here, of course, we have the, the booklet, which gives you all the episodes, all the episode breakdowns and everything, which is pretty cool. And then we have uh, the discs themselves. This is a uh, 1.1, disc 1 and 2. And you have Duke and you have Flint on both of them. You have Duke on disc 1 and Flint on disc 2. And then, I think they pretty much show you what's on here besides just the booklet. The booklet's kind of cool to have because it not only shows you uh, the episodes, but it kind of gives you a synopsis of what each episode is and when it was originally aired. 
like for example right here we have uh, the mass device which was originally titled Rural American Hero but they went, they went with mass device we have the original air dates you know and who it was written by like the first episode was on September 12, 1983. I was just four years old at that time, folks. I was just four years old. September 12th, then you had September 13th, and then you had September 14th, then you had the 15th and the 16th, and these were all in a week. And then you have some bonus features. I think you have uh, Looking Back with the Writer, which was... Uh, Rod Friedman, I think. And then, on disc two, you have the revenge of... You have the uh, Pyramid of Darkness, I think? Yeah. It says the revenge of Cobra, but it's actually the Pyramid of Dark... Oh, that's disc three. What am I talking about? I skipped ahead. So I was going to say, what? <laughs> Whoa. It, 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 there it goes, there it goes. Hold on. I kind of skipped ahead here. Sorry, guys. But yeah, then we have disc two, which is the Revenge of Cobra. And once again, they kind of show you the dates that they came out. Like September 10th, 84, 11th, 12th, 13, and 14. And then you got uh, Ron Friedman, who's also interviewed again. And you can tell by the difference, uh, you could, you're probably wondering, okay, wait, wait a minute, why are they so different in tone? Oh, uh, tone, if you will, the different, why is there a year gap, I should say, in the years? And it's basically, like I said, and Andre pointed this out as well, it was to test the grounds. And again, you can kind of see here on the back what the disc were, or what was on each disc. Like disc one had these episodes. And this bonus feature, and then disc two had these, and then of course, like I see you have Flint and Duke on that one. And then here you have Cobra on this one, because this one is the Revenge of Cobra. So you have Cobra Commander, Storm Shadow, Baroness, and Destro. And then on the inside, you have Snake Eyes on disc three, and you have Roadblock on disc four. And again, this kind of shows you the dates as to, well, not the dates, but shows you the episodes that are on each disc. Like Pyramid of Darkness um, is on disc one. And then I think they started to go into regular episodes afterwards uh, right there on disc four. And again, you get the Cobra characters there and all that, so that's pretty cool. Now, after that, and we're going to put this away here for a second. Hold on, guys. Okay, guys. Now, the next one here is, of course, Season 1.2. And then here you have some bonus features on the back. And then you have uh, Destro and the Baroness on the cover, along with what would be basically like one of the most well-renowned versions of G.I. Joe, in character-wise. Now, we're going to open this again. Open that up. Of course, we get the booklet um, as well. And this shows you... Uh, when the episodes aired here, so you have one... In October 2nd, 85. So basically, Disc 4 kind of gives you the idea of the fact that they were, getting, they were going into a new series at that time. So, pretty cool. And that one. So here, we have... Oh, we also have an advertisement for Space Camp. Huh, how about that? Uh, but anyway, here's... Uh, what is it? Is it uh, yeah, it's Disc... 5 and 6, this is season 1.5, sorry for the amateurness of the camera, uh, we have Roadblock and we have um, 
God, I know his name. Come on, Brian. Shipwreck, yeah. We have, uh, no robot, but uh, Gung Ho. No, is it Gung, gung Ho? I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, it's Gung Ho. Gung Ho, that's who it is. And we have Shipwreck. And then this shows you the episodes that are on um, each disc here. So that's pretty cool. And then, what's the other one? Just buried it. Then here we have Major Blood and uh, the Dreadnoughts with Zartan on the cover. This is disc 7 and 8, 1.2. And then here we have Lady J. And I can't think of his name, honestly. It said something, it's Hawk or something. I can't think of his name. That's not Hawk, but the some, Night Wolf, I think. I don't, I'm not really sure. I can't think of his name right now. I do apologize. We have them on the disc cover. And then here, um, on disc one, we have those episodes. And then disc two is basically special features showing us the history of G.I. Joe. So that's pretty cool. So that's basically, uh, disc, that's basically like season 1.2. And that was the interesting about, thing about this, about G.I. Joe's, because they knew that basically um, what testing the wa they well that's the one thing I should say about the G.I. Joe set, and I give Shout Factory a lot of credit. They they know that this 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 series was split up by years. It was only like five episodes a year up until like eighty five. Then we get to season 1.3 and you have Bazooka, Swift Kick, I can't think of his name right now, and a few others. Alpines right there. And then you have the Twins. And then over here you have a special feature. Pretty cool. And then, on the inside, of course, oh, this is the advertisement. This is what Sean McLean's Aaron Iserag has. This is what he got. I wish I would have gotten it. And I wish I would have gotten that too. But what are you going to do? And of course, they advertise the Rise of Cobra. This is when that movie came out. That's when the movie came out. And do we have a booklet in here? Yes, we do. We have a booklet. We have a booklet. Which is right here. And it shows you the year again when it came out. Let's see how far this goes. So yeah, we got this. That's pretty cool. And then on disc nine and ten, okay, it shows you the episodes on the back here. The one thing about this, and I think it's these episodes here. I'm not really sure. I don't know if it's Worlds Without End. I'm not sure if it's that one. But we do kind of, and I think it was these two parters here. It's these two parters. They kind of gave us the idea of. You know, Baroness might be good. She might have a good heart. She's just, you know, corrupted, <laughs> if you will. But yeah, we got a good side of the Baroness when it came to, I think, Worlds Without End. I think it's that one. I think it's that one. So. Oh, didn't want to do that. <laughs> and then here we have uh, Gung Ho, and I can't think of his name right now. But we have the... No, Bazooka, and again, I can't think of his name, but on the cover, so, it's pretty cool, 
and then here we have season we have disc 11 and 13 and this is labeled by the way this set here is labeled season 1.3 which again it's kind of cool that they acknowledge okay you know 85 you know kind of split things around and on the disc covers here we have swift kick and we have alpine and then we have Did they give us the same kind of disc? <laughs> I didn't notice that. Hold on, hold on. Oh, no, that's what I read in here. So I was really thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> Sorry. But that's what's on disc uh, 11. And then we got the bonus features right here. That's pretty cool. I guarantee you, if you were to get the collector sets and everything of uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe's complete series, it would cost a lot, honestly. And then, of course, we have Season 2.0, which I think completed the Gen 1 version before the movie. And this is it. You have General Hark, Beachcomber, um, Lifeline and uh, can't think of it. Dial Tone, that's who it is. And of course, you have Sepento on here, which kind of gives you an idea of what this one was about. And right here, you got this bonus features. And it says the complete second season. And so we're going to open that up a little bit. We get a booklet, of course, with the Pento on there. And oh, look out, look out, look out, look out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, get that back on the wrist there, on the hand there. Maybe we have the booklet. And then. This is where it begins, and then here's uh, the the date, 1986, when a the miniseries Arise Serpento Arise began, September 15th, 1986. So yeah, it was um, a five-parter, I believe. Yeah, it was. It was a five-parter. And it was interesting the, what they went through to, to make this happen. So, you know, how they brought them. And what's interesting about the stories is how Cobra went through all these depths to get DNA uh, from all these leaders. And then we find out in the movie the truth as to why they were doing it. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then, of course, we have the disc. We have... Disc 1, with Beachcomber, Dial Tone, and Lifeline. And then it shows you, on the back, you know, And then I have no idea what episode that was. That was kind of weird. Did they get trapped in a cartoon or something? Or, or I don't know. Weird. And that shows you what's on disc. Um, what is it? Disc two. Yeah, they're going by regular disc now. But this is disc one. What's on there? And then here's what's on disc two. And then on the covers, you have General Hawk, and uh, I can't think of this guy's name, but General Hawk right there, so that's pretty cool. Maybe somebody could tell me what the episode is, what well, looks like the uh, cartoon characters or something, it's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, this is where the Arise, Serpento, Arise, five-part of the movie, if you will, 
uh, happened. It happened in season two, and that kind of really established it a little bit more. Well, kind of. I think what basically when they did that it was kind of bringing it back to its roots a little bit. Like, okay, this is how we began, you know. So, I mean, they knew they were going to get a new season, so they pretty much said, you know, let's just continue the tradition and do a movie. And the reason it happened, basically, the story is, uh, from what we knew at the time, is Cobra was sick and tired. I think Dr. Mindbender, that's his name, was sick and tired. Baroness was sick and tired. Destro, Major Blood, all of them was sick and tired of Cobra, Cobra Commanders failing. So they said, you know what? We need a leader that is not incompetent, that's going to take stuff seriously. And that's why they did what they did. But then again, we find out the truth in the movie. And then here we have um, disc 2.0, which is, oh, not disc 2.0, but uh, disc 3 and 4 from season 2. And here we have Beachcomber and Lifeline. And then here we have what episodes on which disc. Like this three has these. And this four has that, and then it has the bonus features right there. So that's pretty cool. Hey, I'm gonna get these together now. Hold on. And then, of course, get these back in order here. There we go. And then, of course, finish it all up with the movie. Now, I do have. G.I. Joe Resolute, it's in there somewhere. I do have that on DVD. Which I guess is an adult continuation of G1. G1 G.I. Joe. But this here is basically the movie. This was supposed to be the ending. But I guess because it became popular and, you know, Sunbow, I guess, lost the rights to, ha lost the rights, uh, to do the, the series. Uh, Hasbo decided, you know what, we, need, we, we want to continue it. Dick Entertainment stepped in and said, okay, we'll do it for you. And that's how we got to <laughs> season uh, three and four the way they were. So, despite how you feel about them. But yeah, we have the Blu-ray here. And it's very interesting. It's not bare bones or anything. I mean, you have, uh, let's see. Like I said, it's not really bare bones too much. But like I said, it's here. It doesn't have no rating, but initially, uh, from what I understand, Stand, it had a, P, a G rating of all things, but I think they were actually meaning B, uh, PG. And then here's an advertisement for all the to get the complete series of both Shia Joe and Transformers. And then we have, of course, the advertisement for those, which I wish I would have gotten, but I did not, unfortunately. But I did get the series. And then here's the disc. Here we have the Blu ray with Falcon on it, and we have the DVD with Hawk on it. Which is pretty cool. And oh, by the way, right now, if you have stars on demand, just uh, uh, look up or type up or even speak into your remote, G.I. Joe the movie, and it'll come up on demand. So you can watch the movie on demand. So yeah, there we go. That's the first of my 80s complete collections. This is G.I. Joe G1, the Real American Hero complete series. And I'm going to be back with another one. In just a moment. Okay, guys, we are back here. We are now looking at, you see it here, Gem and the Holograms. Now, a little bit of history. Uh, I originally had, I think, what was it, Season 1 and 2 by Rhino Entertainment. I think I sold those because I needed money at the time. But when Shell Factory made the announcement they were doing this, I think it was the tie-in with the movie or something like that, the failed movie, um, I decided, you know what, I was going to get it, and I did. So here it is. Here's Jim and the Holograms, the complete, as they put it, the truly outrageous complete 
series yeah, and you can see it's got glitter on it and everything I was actually I might still contemplate trying to get this for my older sister because she was a big Jem fan as a matter of fact she named my niece after Jem with the name of Jerrica because of Jerrica Benton so yeah pretty cool so here we have like I say Jem and we're gonna take whoa, take her out and it's a little hard but then here's the thing nice very nice firmness right there and then here we have all of the seasons yes we have all the seasons right here uh, to enjoy now she doesn't come with a booklet like the other ones do but you get the episode listings like right here like on the side kind of gives you an idea of which disc has what episodes and the colored differently the colored in coordination with the seasonal uh, release that they have like this is all purple for season one and you have one two three four disc on season one um, as well and I think there's a bonus feature in here. Yeah, video jukebox. It's the only thing you get is the video jukebox on season one. But that's season. But that's the first season of Gem. The next one, of course, is season two. Again, the bonus feature is a ju uh, video jukebox. And then again, you get an idea of where all the episodes are from. I think Jim right now might be the only uh, G1 uh, show from Hasbro, along with G.I. Joe, that's still on Discovery Family. I could be wrong. got to look that up. But yeah, that's disc uh, two. And again, it's coronated by, with the disc looking like records in pink. So that's pretty nice. And then, of course, we have season three. And oh, by the way, season two just like season one is four discs so you know like I said is four discs so it's pretty cool I think I showed you on that one yeah this is a four disc on season one just in case and then of course we have season three which you actually get a lot more on the bonus features here. You do get a video jukebox, I believe, and you get all of that. You get original commercials, storyboards, you get rare DVD raw material. And I think you get an interview with the girl that voiced her. That's pretty cool. And of course, a uh, video jukebox. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a turquoise color, and then, of course, you get all the episodes, like, right there, so it's pretty nice. And then, of course, unlike disc one, uh, unlike the first two uh, series, uh, seasons, you only get three discs here, and I think the third one is a bonus feature, I believe. I think it's bonus. I think no, it's got some episodes, but it's mostly no. It's a bonus disc, is what it is. So, so yeah, you, episode episode wise, you only get like two discs, but you get a bonus disc with the bonus features and everything. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that's a pretty cool uh, thing to have. Have and everything. So, yeah, gem and the holograms. You know, I know people might be like, why would you get gem? Here's the thing. My family, here's the thing, I was Transformers and G.I. Joe, my sisters had shows too. As a matter of fact, one of them inspired a Lauren Faust to create probably the most successful incarnation of it of all time. So, that's going to do it for part one, I mean for the second, uh, not second part, but the second uh, set I have. And I'll be back with another one. Alright, so next up. We have the complete series of the original Thundercats, which recently 
region, recently celebrated 35 years uh, this past week, actually. They showed that on uh, Facebook. And I know a lot of people don't like Thundercats Roar. Believe me, I understand that. I mean, you take something like this, which did have some comedic moments, and you turn it into Thundercats Roar, yeah, you're going to get a lot of backlash. My only hope is if they want people to take it seriously, is they need to kind of tone down the comedy, raise up the action and adventure, and make it a little bit more serious. But yeah, I want to thank, I think it was, I don't know who it was, I think it might have been Frank Hill or Ignacio Hernandez, um, I believe, Ingram, I, I can't think who it was. Whoever it is watching, thank you for sending me this. But they sent me the complete set. I don't think I bought one on my own. I think they sent me the complete set uh, separately. So yeah, we have season one, this season one, volume one. It is basically uh, see episodes one. The first 33 episodes of 65. So that's pretty cool. And it tells you it continues on to season 1, volume 2. That's how massive this thing was. Now, fortunately, we're going to bring these out. They do show you the titles and who's on the covers uh, as well. So, here... On uh, the first the first disc, we have Chitara, and we have Lion-O, and then it shows you the episodes on what disc, and I think they have, may have covers, no, the, all the Thundercat Roar, all the Thundercat logo, so that's pretty cool. But Warner Brothers brought these out, and they said, you know, we can make some money off this. Yeah, I think they might want to reconsider the war deal, the roar deal, if you will, because I don't think they'll make money off that, especially with nostalgic fans. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think so. I, I don't, I don't think so, honestly. So, yeah, we got that, and again, this shows you the the episodes on each of them, and you can tell just by the episode titles. They took this a lot more serious. Then we have on disc uh, two, on the second on the second one we hear we have Ly we have Panthera and Tigra, and then that's the episodes right there. And then we have Wily Kit, Riot Cat, and Snarf on this one, and those are the episodes on there. So that's pretty cool. Oops. Did a little zoom in there. Didn't want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what the disc, that's basically what you have on the Thundercat disc. And then when we got into the later seasons, they started to do a little bit more special features like on the later volumes. Like with this one, like with this one, um, they made it a little bit more embrossed. You can feel that. So that's pretty cool. And this is 34 to 65 of 65. That's pretty cool. And th this thing was massive, guys. No doubt. It was uh, massive. And each cover is kind of different in its own right. You basically have the Thundercats fighting the mutants. Which is cool. So here are the episodes on these discs. And then the episodes on this one. And then the episodes on this one. And the artwork even shows you that they tried to take this a lot more seriously than... Yeah, and it's just the Thundercat logo in uh, blue. They basically... That's the one common thing sometimes about these complete disc sets of the 80s series. Is they would always kind of put them in a different color scheme. And, and the disc would just resonate the logo. So, that's the first one. That's the first season. Season two, the embrossing continued. And we have Lion O once again on the cover, which is pretty cool. And this is episodes 35 to 65. Oh, this is volume two. Here is volume, here's the <laughs> volume one. 
this has a nice lithograph on it, so that's pretty cool. It's got a nice lithograph on it, which I like. Kind of made a mistake. Though. I was thinking, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I got I got out of order here. <laughs> I, I know I know my thun I know my Thundercat stuff. So yeah, I got a nice lithograph here of Lino. And then we get some special features on the bottom here. I don't know if we get special features on the other ones. I think we do. Yeah, we get some special features here too. And I might be switching out cameras in just a bit, guys. Yeah, we get some special features, just to let you know. But we get a nice lithograph here. And, um, open it up. And we have Season 2. And this is where they start to introduce new Thundercat characters. Which I thought was good. And I think, yeah, they keep the tradition of, you know, just being the logo in a different color background with it. But this is what's on disc 5 and 6 for Season 2. And my battery's about to die here, guys. So I'm going to have to switch out something in a moment. And then here on the uh, disc... 3 and 4, actually I've got it backwards here, so here's disc 3 and 4, that was disc 5 and 6. A little out of sorts here. <laughs> and then here is disc seven, 1 and 2. This is disc 1 and 2. And again, like I said, they introduced new characters as well, and then here you have the episodes. The one thing about Thundercats is they did a lot of multi-part 5-parters. And I don't know if the Roar version is going to be able to live up to that. So I'll be right back, guys. Got to switch out some cameras. Okay, guys. Had to switch out cameras. I got my phone camera I'm using uh, right now. So, well, the other one charges over there. But we're going to finish off here by looking at the second volume of Season 2. This, of course, is the... Com this kind of completes it. Um, if you will, and then of course you have the bonus stuff on there, so that's pretty cool. So, let's see who's on this disc, on these sets, shall we? So here, again, we started to get some new characters introduced. So here we have disc 11, oh wait, I got this out of order, hold on. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let me get this in order, guys. Let me get this in order. Let me get this in order. Here we go. So, yeah, we started to get some new villain characters as well. So, here's seven, this seven and eight. Here's the episodes that were on the disc. It's just 9 and 10. And again, like I said before, you can tell just by the artwork. They were they knew this one was a lot more serious. And then here is disc um, 11 and 12 to kind of finish it off. So, yeah, basically the, um, put that right there. But basically, yeah, the, uh, let's get this in order here. There we go. But basically, yeah, you could definitely tell just not just by the artwork, but by the way, by the way the show is uh, presented here, just by the episode titles and everything, that they took this a lot more serious. They this was a more serious version. Like I said, Ed, um, 
basically basically like I said they you can kind of see why fans are very protective of the show um, if you will kind of see that so So, yeah. Um, but, again, you can definitely tell why fans are more protective of Thundercats here because of the fact that, you know, the, you you can't, you cannot basically change up the format. I mean, here's the thing. When when they did the 2000 Thundercats, the, or that 2002 one, people were more acceptive of that because that was kind of what you would want Thundercats to be if they got rebooted or retooled. Not what you're getting with Roar. Again, like I've said, I think Roar needs to basically tone it down on the humor and focus more on the action and the storytelling and all that, and then we might get something. So, anyway, though, guys, that's going to do it for this one, and I'll be back with another one in just a moment. Okay, guys, I am back here, and yes, the next one we have here is Mask. Again, I don't know who sent this. I think it was, I don't know, it was Frank Hill or Ignacio Hernandez. I do not know. So, guys, whoever whoever sent me this, thank you very much for sending it to me. But this is Mask, the complete series. Yes, retrospective featurette. And I did have some of the toys. In fact, I know for a fact I had this dude. There's no doubt about that. And I don't know if I had the car. I think I may have had the truck. I'm not... Not really sure. But this was released. This complete series was uh, released by Shout Factory. As a matter of fact, you can find it right about there. So, yeah. Uh, that's who released it. And we're going to look on the inside. Nothing there. But we do get advertisements for Transformers and Beast Wars Transformers. Reboot, and then the All-American Hero Complete Collection set, which I wanted to get but could not. And, of course, the movie for G.I. Joe. Anyway, what do we have here? Well, we have two uh, volumes, actually. Well, actually, we have uh, six volumes, but they'll comprise together into two, uh, two different sets. So, two different sets here. And it's pretty nice. Uh, we're going to look on the inside here, see what we get. And you can kind of tell that it it's kind of copy and paste a little bit. That's the one thing uh, with these disc sets. Uh, they're kind of copy and paste. Like right there, you get that, that big, big deal, big truck there. That Again, I think I had when I was a kid. I'm not really sure. It's just the same cover over and over again. On the disc, so that's all right. But yeah, we get about let's see, one, we get two, four, six discs. So we have basically it's a 12 volume set, is what it is. All together. And then these are the episodes on each disc. And then we got a retrospective featurette. And then here is the... Other volumes, this is how they do them. They got them volume one to three, in volumes four to six. So, and again, just like with the other one, it's just the leader of the uh, bad guys this time on the cover, and it's just the same background. That was the one thing that when they first started doing some of these, they were creative with them. Oh, that's wrong. They were kind of creative with them, so I did appreciate that. I think anybody did.
We've got a little bit of a different picture there. So here are the episodes on this volume. Get them in. Another retrospective featurette. But yeah, not really not much on the mask volume. I'm going to put it like that. Um, not really much, but, you know, they, they, they try. There's, there's no doubt that they've been trying to, to get these uh, out there because they know people like them. I just wish they would put a little bit more effort in the artwork of the disc. You know what I'm saying? Or even the co I mean, the cover is cool. I mean, there's no doubt the cover is cool. But I think they should have done a little bit more with that. But anyway, that's going to do it for that one. And I got another one coming up. Okay, we are back, guys. And yes, the next one up is, as I said earlier, the one that inspired uh, Lauren Faust to really make Friendship is Magic the phenomenon what it is. Because she took elements from this and she took elements from My Little Ponytails, which I do have the complete series of uh, as well. Uh, took elements from those and combined them together to give us what we got in Friendship is Magic. As well as some of our own ideas and the other writers' ideas. But here we have uh, the complete series. Now, what's kind of funny, though, is we got to kind of go in order a little bit here because uh, we got to kind of go in order just a bit because basically this is how it went chronologically we gotta go we gotta go in a bit of water here you see this variety disc here this variety disc has the first two specials the one that's titled escape from katarina that was the second primetime special in syndication i think and then the one right here as soon as it focuses in rescue from midnight castle or escape from midnight castle whatever it's called uh was the first one so Escape from Katarina and Rescue from Midnight Castle chronologically were the first two MLPs in animated form. Then we got the movie that followed Escape from Katarina, I believe. I think it followed that. So we got the movie, which I also have on Blu-ray because of the two-pack deal. In fact... Absolutely, absolutely. It's probably what it's definitely what it is because when you when you look at the fact that you know it's more expensive to produce. I mean, not not saying they're still not doing it. They're even taking shows that you would get in streaming services exclusively and putting them onto DVD, releasing them on DVD and all that. But still, the point is, this is completely different. Okay. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I thought I unpaused there. But going back to what I said, um, this, 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 this is what the disc looks like. It's just called the Classic uh, TV Collection. And again, that is the original Applejack on there from G1. And in this, just like I said, has the uh, 30th anniversary disc cover on it. It basically says 30th anniversary. If I can get it out. That's all it really has is on there. That's And ironically, like I was saying, I don't know if I paused by accident when I did it. So hold on, guys. Uh, but basically, that disc cover is the same DVD. That DVD here is the same DVD they used with the 30th anniversary one. And then the cover of the DVD is what they put on the Blu-ray. So 
<laughs> they didn't even change it to 35th, so that's kind of weird. But now we have uh, the complete... Now we'll get into this. This is the complete series. Um, I originally... Here's the thing. Just like with Gem, I bought the first season uh, when it was under the right... When, when when Rhino Home Entertainment or Rhino Mation, Rhino Mation, aka Rhino Home Entertainment, had the licensing distributing rights or distributing license right, they had the distributing licensing rights uh, to distribute the series onto home video. So I got the complete first season, but I never got anything else after that because, of course, they ended it. I think they did come out with a second one, but I couldn't find it. So, Shout Factory, of course, decided to release this, and it's all 65 episodes of the original series, which includes the two primetime specials, and I think those are at uh, the end. So, we're going to open this. It's got a slip cover, as you can see. It's just the same cover on the end, and there we go. And we're going to open it, and we'll show you what's on there. Oh, there goes that disc. And it's just basically like Escape from Katarina. It just says uh, classic uh, TV collection, but it says the complete series, and it shows you what disc it is. And in here, you get the listing of all the episodes and which disc they are on. And the sequel to the movie, because that's pretty much what it is, the End of Flood of Valley was a five-parter comprised into ten mini-parts. You can tell. And they did, and they kind of give you the different, kind of tell you what disc is which because they differentiate the color to say what disc it is. Like, this one's disc two, here's disc three, and then here's disc four. And then right here, you have, these are, in fact, these episodes right here kind of tell you the debut of the G1 versions, like Sanambula, who is the uh, Egyptian pony in G4, was an evil witch pony that was stealing uh, the pony's youth. She's right there. We actually had a spike episode, which is kind of cool. Rescue from Midnight Castle, Escape from Midnight Castle. Um, here's the one thing. This and this are chronologically should chronologi chronologically should be above this. Or at least be shown as bonuses. That's what they should be. They should either be at the top at the beginning of disc one or shown as bonuses. And then disc Two has Grogar, so yeah, you would think they would probably have sent, saved him for that uh, towards the end, but what are you going to do? But anyway, that pretty much is the G1 collection. That's pretty much G1 of MLP. Okay, so the next one up, again, a good friend of mine online sent me this. Galaxy Hi, this came out in the mid 80s on NBC. And this was a Rick Moranis inspired cartoon, I believe. Well, no, actually, it wasn't Rick Moranis. Actually, well, let's see. It was developed by Chris Columbus and Barsers. I think it may have co starred Rick Moranis, I think, or some character like that. But anyway, the premise is you have these two high school students. I think they're in here somewhere. But you basically have these uh, two high school students that get transferred, that get selected and transferred to a high school in outer space and they attend there with all these different alien creatures and all that so it's pretty cool in fact I think 
Yeah, it's one of the ca- the drawings for this. I will put it this way: uh, did not represent what you see in the show. It's more of a selling point, I guess. But here, we're gonna open this up for a second. And uh, yeah, again, the drawings do not represent what the show was. Uh, this is what is this? This is they don't even have the the name of the disc. Uh, uh, Come on, guys. Seriously, be... <laughs> and it's only... It looks like... Oh, it's only one disc? Or is it two? No, it's one. It's only one disc. It looks like... They don't even... Uh, yeah, it's only one disc on here. Oh, okay. It says volume two. So this is the second volume right here. Yeah, so this is the second volume right here. But basically, it was just a high school animated show for kids. And the selling point, like I said, was these two high schoolers. Ami and Doyle. Yeah, it pretty much says it what, it what happens here. And, yeah, it's only one disc. It's only two discs and anything. It's distributed by Anime Works, so. So, yeah, they end up, from what I understand, the premise is they get transferred to the school because they get selected to attend there. So, I guess it's a fun premise. All right, next up is another big hit from the 80s. Rankin Bass also did this. There have been some uh, thoughts and theories that they're probably based in the same universe, and that is Silver Hawks and Thundercats, both done by Rankin Bass. Here we have some special features and everything. I think this is volume one. I think that there is a volume two. I just have not yet gotten it yet. I would like to get it, hopefully soon. And just like with the Thundercats, some of them, it's nicely embossed, so that's pretty cool. Like I said, it's nicely embossed, which is pretty cool. Just like the Thundercat one. And it's nice and shiny, too, so that's nice. It's nicely embossed all over. Uh, basically, the way the shows were broadcast, from what I remember, uh, and this is before Disney Afternoon and all that, is you would have Thundercats, you would have Silverhawks, and then you would have some other shows as well, which I'll get into. Come on. Let go. Let go. So, yeah, that's pretty cool oh, on that one. And I know a friend gave me this one, too. Again, there is another volume, but I haven't gotten it yet. And I think it's kind of expensive to get. It's got 32 episodes, volume one, four discs. It's just basically the same as the cover. And then this shows you, like, you know, you know what episodes are on which discs. And then you got, I think the, yeah, you got different characters on the covers. I'll give them that. At least they did that. And they made that nice and brassy as well. So that's pretty cool. And, and then, of course, oh, if you would have a blank one because it's two sided. Yeah, it's, it's a two-sided disc. I don't know why they didn't put things. But again, you also see what's on there um, as well. So that's pretty cool. Again, I haven't gotten the second volume yet, but who knows? Maybe I'll get that someday down the line. But that's Silverhawks for you. So, yeah, you know, whoever uh, sent me that, I really appreciate it. I think it was somebody. I think Frank or somebody. Ignacio and Frank sent me that. Hey guys, so now we're back with another big one. As a matter of fact, it's made news recently. 
And that is He-Man, Masters of the Universe. This is the original filmation. This was distributed, if I can find it here, doo -doo -doo, by Entertainment Rights, I think it might have been, yeah, BCI at the time. I think they went out of business or something. But yeah, I got these as well. I think, I don't know if I ordered some of these or a friend sent them to me. I think I may have ordered them. But it's nicely embossed, so it's pretty cool. It gives you an idea of what you can get. I kind of ripped off the thing by accident, so that was kind of my fault. But this is volume... This is season one, volume two... Yeah, I think I may have ripped it off about there. <laughs> you know. So, we're going to look in here. Uh. Yeah, and I think they're going to go by what that says right there for the new series. I like the fact that they got quotes in there and everything. So, you have all the characters on each disc. You have He-Man, Orko, Tila, Man-Beast. I can't think of a name right now. And then you got Skeletor on that end. And then, um, of course... Whoa, it, it, easy... Whoa, <laughs> big. And then, of course, it came, believe it or not. The one thing I did like about some of these packages, when they were done right, is they came with some great features. Like, you have a booklet, of course, which tells you the episodes, and I think when they aired, or not. And then you get some art cards, too, which is pretty cool. And then we get the next one. This is the I'm focus here. There we go. We have the season two volume, season one, volume two. And they packed a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff in these things. I mean,. You know, just for a show that had limited animation, they, they really went to town with it. There's no doubt about it. They really upped their game with it. So, I like that. I really did. I think the reason VCI... Oh, yeah, her name's Evil Lynn. That's who it was. Okay. You know, the one on the cover there, this girl? That's Evil Lynn. But, yeah, they upped the game with this. So, here we have the Sorceress... Man of Many Faces, The King. Uh, ooh, it goes everything down there. That's not good. I uh, can't think of his name right now. It's his name. And Lockjaw down there. And then, of course, got a booklet for the episode booklet. And then some character cards. So, pretty cool. It's pretty nice. And now, of course, we got the one that's getting a lot of attention now due to the Netflix series, which actually seems to be a success. In fact, the first season or two are out on DVD now. And that is She-Ra, Princess of Power. Now, the one thing about She-Ra and He-Man's um, thing, a little bit, if you guys want to know, 
is the lack of puzzle. I think they're kind of like a puzzle. I'm not sure this fits in, fits correctly, but it's kind of like a puzzle, um, if you will. It's like you get all the pieces together. You could, yeah, it fits. It's about right. I'll line up. Yeah, there we go. It's got to line up just a bit, but it's like a puzzle that you put together. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So here we have Shira, Princess of Power, from Season 1, Volume 1, the original Filmation one. And just like with He-Man, it's set up in a good way because you got the characters on here. You got She-Ra, you got Carl, you got, um, can't think of a name right now. Oh, but, uh, like I say, you got She-Ra, you got Carl, you got, it starts with a name, I can't think of it right now. And then you got this guy, a bug eye deal. And you got Katara, the original, and then Horak. And one thing people are saying that they're actually doing pretty good with Katara, um, with the new series, is Katara. So, okay. So here we have an art card. And another art card, if you will. And then, of course, a booklet and advertisements. Big freaking whoop de doo. And which one of them got ripped out? <laughs> but yeah, like I said, with He Man, they actually did a good, good job supplying. Uh, people with a lot of extra features and everything when it came to these. So the next one, of course, is Volume 2. This is Volume 2, Season 1. Cool. And then again, you have a art card. So, pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I think one of the things that may have caused uh, BCI to go out of business maybe or cause them to lose some licensing rights or distributing rights for some of these is uh, even though they gave out some good extra features uh, they may have, I think basically some of the disc and stuff I don't know if it's the flimsiness of the covers or what but I think one of the things that may have caused them to go out of business they put too much into the disc which into the disc set which is supposed to do but I think 
they wanted to do more than expected. And of course, guys, I cannot finish something like this off, well, for right now, that is, without talking about the one that I've been a fan of since I was a kid. That is, of course, Transformers, the series. And as I've said before, just on record, I do have the complete series courtesy of Rhino, because Rhino, apparently, when it came to completing Hasbro's series, was able to complete this series on DVD. G.I. Joe was a close second. Uh, My Little Pony and Jam were kind of like in the third range. But yeah, this is the complete G1 series. And, uh, oh, I, I don't think I can do it justice, really. But, uh, yeah, it's every single episode uh, you can think of. It's all of them uh, that you can think of. I mean, the covers are different. I did a video, I believe, on this. If I find it, I'll link it below. But it's every single episode um, put together from beginning to end, which is pretty cool. Every disc here is basically, I mean, every season is in four discs on two separate volumes, which is really nice. Fifteen DVDs. Now, you might say, well, how is that possible? One of them is a bonus disc. That's pretty cool. It's nicely silver and everything. You get a lot here you can ever imagine. But you know what? This wasn't the end of G1. I do have Beast Wars, which I do have that. But I also have this courtesy of... Shout Factory. This is the one thing I think Rhino wanted to do, but they never had a chance to do it. And that is release the continuation of G1 from Japan. It's pretty cool. These are all based in G1. The only, the only difference... The only difference is they basically do not acknowledge they do not acknowledge um rebirth they acknowledge you know the return of optimus prime but they do not acknowledge rebirth at all basically they start after basically the way their continuity goes rebirth never happened but you know the it's basically like rebirth never happened and the headmasters came on their own. They weren't, you know, like, you know, created from existing Autobots that, you know, lend their heads and all that. So, um, but yeah, it's it's really cool to have these. I mean, again, it's, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, Shell Factory did this. The only thing about it is, uh, I think it's in here. Yeah, it's right there. The only thing that people may or may not be disappointed about is it's English subtitles only with Japanese audio. But then again, they may be cool with that because from what I understand, when they did try bringing these over around here on the West Coast, because some parts of the West Coast from Hawaii to certain areas here in California, we did get it, but we got an English dub that wasn't good. So, anyway though, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. That's pretty much... Uh, where I'm going to hold off on my 80s thing uh, right now. I mean, I do have um, other shows like Heathcliff and the Cadillac Cats. That's complete. 
But the way the discs are, <laughs> distri are in there, it's basically like, you know, it's a slip cover like this. It's a slip cover. But when you open it up, the discs go right there in little uh, DVD sleeve cases. So it's that, you know, you got that there. I, I You got that with it. So, and I have cops. I do have cops. The, you know, uh, I do have cops, you know, the animated series. And I have a few others, and maybe in time I'll show them off down the line. But I just wanted to show you primarily what I do have, like from a primary 80s perspective of what I used to watch. And this is before Disney Afternoon, guys. You know, this is before Rescue Rangers and DuckTales and all that, but this is prim this is primarily what I would watch. I mean, the way, the way it was, like, put together, you had... Because, like I mentioned earlier... The way it would go is this. You would have Silverhawks, you had Thundercats, you had He-Man, you had She-Ra. Then you had Transformers, you had G.I. Joe, you had Jim. And I think, and I think before, uh, I think after, and I think before G.I. Joe or one, I think before Jim you had My Little, I think it went like My Little Pony, Jim, Transformers, G.I. Joe on one station, which I think was KTVU. KTVU Channel 2, which is known as uh, Fox 2 now. And then KBHK, which is KBCW. Um, I ended up having on there Thundercats, Silver, Silver Hawks, you know, She-Ra, He-Man, you name it. So, that, so, yeah, those are the shows I watched. And Silver Hawks was also on there, too. It was on KBHK. That kind of shows you how long I've been around, if I kind of remember the scheduling of each show, of when each show came on, so, uh, but anyway, go, guys, I just thought I'd let you see what I have, um, 80s wise and all that, so let me know what you guys think down below, comment if you like, Andre, or comment if you like, Andre, thank you for inspiring me to do this with your review of the first five episodes of G.I. Joe, and Zero Nazarak, thank you for kind of giving me the idea to do the, uh, camera thing while kind of uh, talking about the sets as well again i'm not going to pull all these out because there's just too many and then these pretty much again i've done videos on them so i'll probably probably let you see those videos so i can get find them you know find them and put the links out uh but anyway guys this uh let you see all that and i will talk to you later i'm gonna get something to eat and i am out